What's up guys, this is Casey and welcome back to the channel. So we have a lot to unpack here today. We need to talk about the Fed discount window. We need to go over exactly what that is. We need to talk about a lot of these stocks that seem to be in trouble, especially over the past few days. There's a couple of stocks that just are continuing to fall and fall and fall, irrespective of the fact that we have major banks that are funding these small banks. The Federal Reserve has come out and said that they're going to back the banks and yet these stocks still continue to fall drastically. We also have something going on right now to where there's a little rumor going around in the banking industry to where Credit Suisse looks like it's in the process of being sweeped up by another major company slash bank. So let's just kind of hop into this. So what is the discount window? Well, basically the window is something that allows the Federal Reserve to lend other banks money who need liquidity and basically in times of need. It's the main and direct lending facility provided by the Fed to support stability and liquidity to the U.S. banking systems, usually when they need it in times of measures. So it enables the central bank to lend money for up to 90 days. Recently, it's been up to a year. Now, if you guys have been following the stocks that have been following over the past few weeks, you have been hearing terms of discount window. You've been hearing terms of programs of the Federal Reserve setting things up. You also may have heard something to where the large banks are actually putting money into the fund that the Federal Reserve set up so that the small banks can have some stability. And all of that is true. The discount window is part of that. So why is it called the discount window? Well, the term on it is which the money is offered has often been revised by the Federal Reserve, depending on the circumstances. But it historically involved lending cash that the collateral is worth. So a discount is commonly known in the banking parlay as it's a haircut. It adds an extra safety buffer for the Fed in case it doesn't get paid back. And it also makes the borrowing less attractive. So it basically requires the banks to pay back more than what they borrow from the Federal Reserve. And so it isn't something that they really want to do unless they absolutely have to do it. So if usually when they do it, it's because they have to. And they have had to do it a lot over the past few weeks, so much so to where they have borrowed over $164 billion in a rush to actually have backstop of funding and liquidity in the, in the last two weeks. This is more backstop funding than any bank has had since 2008 recession. So we're talking about over 14 years now. And you want to know what's even more concerning about this? is that over the past two weeks, a lot of the quantitative tightening that the Federal Reserve has done over the past year has been undone. Now, some people will argue and say that the Federal Reserve adding additional liquidity to the, to the discount rate is not technically quantitative easing. Some people will argue that it is, and it's because the Federal Reserve is still the theoretically funneling money back into the system to allow banks to pull it down. So they aren't directly funding the money into it, but they're saying, hey, we have the money here, so if you need it, come holler at your boy. And boy, have the banks been doing that over the past few weeks. So much so to where a lot of the banks have been borrowing 10, 15, 20 billion dollars. A lot of the large banks, such as Bank of America, Charles Schwab, have been putting in $5 billion so to help out the smaller banks as well. And it's just concerning because right now we don't know whether or not this market is and whether or not the, the stock market, um, you know, that's been falling is going to continue to fall as a result of the, the crisis. We don't know how much the contagion and systemic risk this is at the moment. But one of the things we do know is that if you take a look here and take a look here at the actual borrowing windows, it has gone up drastically in every single recession. 2008, look at the discount window borrowing. And 2019-20 wasn't a recession, but you know what this was? This was during the pandemic. And look at this. This is absolutely massive. This is 2022. Folks, we are in for a heck of an awakening here in the next three months to 12 months. I mean, if the stock market does not crash here by the end of the year. I don't. I see no way how this doesn't happen by next year, at the absolute least. I mean, if you take a look at 2008, 2009, we had a massive, massive correction. We also had a massive, massive correction in the 20s as well. And look at this. This is even. This is almost double. Almost, if you add both of these, 
is at the height of this. Close, not quite, but pretty close. So we can expect when it actually comes down to the, when, when, when finally the Federal Reserve decides to cut down on the discount window and actually aggressively start pulling out additional funds, we are going to see a significant pullback in the markets. Now, right now, the QQQs have been pulling back, but they were technically 35% of the lows. They've been pulling back a lot. This SPY, the SPY, the SPY, hasn't really pulled back as much as we thought that it should. But historically speaking, even in recessions, the S&P does not fall hard and or as fast as the QQQs do. So that's not to be uh, that's not to be surprised at, at in the slightest. But one of the things I also want to show you guys is take a look at this chart. Look at take a look at the Federal Reserve balance sheet, and you tell me whether or not you see quantitative easing. This is what the Federal Reserve has been doing since they said that they were going to start tightening and raising the rates. So basically reducing the amount of money that banks can borrow. You know, the balance sheet has been going up, down, 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 down. Great. Sounds like a plan. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's just shot up. And this has been over the past, what are we talking here? Two weeks. I mean, this is a ridiculous amount of money. If you actually, actually take a look between the bottom to the top here, the Federal Reserve has basically given back half of a year's worth of what they said they've been trimming off over the past year in two weeks. So, you know, anyone that says that this isn't a concern or that this is contained, I'm not so sure about it. If you ask me, I think that they're trying to calm the markets, that they're not trying to publicly create a lot of panic because you can't do that and you shouldn't want to do that, even if there is significant concern. But you have actual large banks that are sitting here trying to fund, trying to fund the actual small banks. You have the Federal Reserve balance sheet that has gone up drastically over the last two weeks. I mean, this clearly is an indication that there's a problem. And you have a concern of you even have the CEOs that are rushing out to purchase their own stocks of a lot of the big banks trying to instill confidence so that the banks don't have a run. But we have a problem. And what is that? Let's take a look at these charts. First Republic Bank. I want to show you guys something like this. If you are in a stock like this, this is the kind of stock you don't want to be in. OK, so this is, is this the daily. Yeah, this is the daily. Yes. Three month. This bank has gone from $125 down to $23. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days. This bank has lost roughly 80% of its value. I'm talking, that is terrifying. I'm not done. Let's take a look at Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse or Swiss, it depends on how you ask. I guess it's technically Swiss, right? I want to be want to pronounce these you know these bank names correctly. Let's take a look at Credit Suisse. Over the past, what do we have? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In a matter of nine days, this stock has fallen drastically. We're talking over fifty percent. Well, give or take, if you if you count back here, it has. But you know, we're talking you know 40, 30, 30, 30 to forty percent, just significant. Now the thing with Credit Suisse is that there's a rumor that UBS is in the process of merging with Credit Suisse. And my theory with that is that I think that Credit Suisse is on the ropes, as we all can tell based on this chart. And, and this is just a theory, I haven't read this, but my guess is that the Swiss government does not want outside governments purchasing one of their major banks in their own country because as we know the Swiss they love the banks they like their privacies within obviously their, their their legal requirements and so just having a foreign entity owning one of the largest banks just doesn't really look good nor would we want that here as well really in any country and so UBS is in the process of merging with Credit Suisse at least that's a rumor we're going to keep an eye out on it but overall guys I want to just say Things are looking very questionable at the moment. I do not think that we are out of the woods in the slightest. Um, what I actually expect to occur is over the next few months, I think the markets are going to continue to fall further. I do expect something else to come out to where I think at the end of this, or I should say the apex, I'm expecting a bank, a significant bank. I don't really know if it's going to be Charles Schwab, it's going to be JP Morgan, who knows? Is it going to be, you know, another type of credit suites, but I'm expecting a significant bank to be publicly released information, publicly released information to say that they're 
are having issues or to see their stock falling significantly. You guys have also kept in mind, Charles Schwab has had some issues and it has not looked very hot at all. I want to take a look at this real quick. So I want to show you guys another stock, but this time U.S. based that it is really on the ropes. $81, it, has, it fell all the way down to $45. So we're talking over 50% in just a matter of a few days. It has rebounded, but now it appears as though that it's still starting to roll back over again, and we're going to keep an eye on it. So we're not out of the woods. I think this is just the beginning, to be quite honest with you guys. As of right now, we have the inverted yield curve, which we know usually is an indicator of major recessions. We have the two-year note. Uh, bond note, note that I showed you guys in my last video. If you haven't seen that video, go back and watch it. I'll talk to you in that video about why the two-year bond note is one of the major indicators of a stock market recession. It's only ever gotten below a certain point in 2008 and 2000. Both of those was dead on the money with a stock market recession. And now we have an issue to where the borrowing window of the Fed is so high to where I think with all of these things combined, we're going to have a recession and it's going to be significant. But this is not the time to panic. Like I tell you guys, do not go rushing and pulling all of your money out of all the banks. This is absolutely not what you should do. The U.S. government, all governments are not going to allow all banks to collapse. It's just, it, it just will not happen. Um, but what I do want you guys to do is to be smart about your investing. That's where you can get in trouble. So I don't want you to go out and buy a bunch of penny stocks. Don't go out and buy a bunch of growth stocks. This is not a growth stock market right now. You typically only buy growth stocks at the beginning of a bull market and you want to buy either acyclical stocks or you want to buy consumer staples or things like Walmart, very safe stocks that do very well in tight liquidity issues and also in recessionary periods such as what we're in now. And then just kind of be safe, be smart and do a lot of dollar cost averaging. In my other videos, I'll talk to you guys about how when you are going to invest in the market, you want to be very smart. There's no need to go in and to actually start buying a lot of risky stocks. And for heaven's sakes, whatever you do, don't start day trading, uh, especially if you're not a professional trader. It's just not that safe. You want to understand that slow and steady wins the race. So try to buy big tech stocks. Try to buy big consumer staples. Try to buy maybe some energy stocks so that there can be some vol volatility in that. Uh, also, maybe maybe look at getting some oil stocks or things of that nature, whatever it is, utilities. But you want to make sure that your dollar cost average, you want to spread your portfolio up. And at the end of the day, if you're just like, listen, I don't have time for all that, Casey. What do I need to put my money into when the markets do begin to rebound after this recession is over? Well, I would just say put it in the spire of the VU. You know, you can't go wrong with putting it into a total stock market ETF. It's very safe. It follows the entire stock market. So there's not going to be any 60, 70, 80 percent type crashes. It's the kind of thing where you can put your money into it every two weeks, every week, whenever you have money, and you can just kind of walk away. Five, 10 years from now, you'll be up 10, 15, 20, 30 percent. And that's that's a cumulative. So as the, the money you keep adding, 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 it'll keep increasing, increasing, increasing. That's the safest way. And that's it, guys. So I hope you really found this video valuable. I wanted to keep it content filled and I wanted to also keep it condensed. Uh, we're going to have some additional videos to talk about. Uh, I expect that over the next few days, a few weeks, we're going to have a lot more new nuggets dropping about different banks and their financial liquidity issues. We also have the Federal Reserve meeting coming up as well to where we we'll need to find out whether or not the Federal Reserve is going to do a quarter basis point or they're going to do half a basis point. That's just a fancy way of saying that they're going to raise the rate up to a half of a percent or a quarter of a percent. That's kind of significant right now. We need to know what they're going to do. So stay tuned. If you guys haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like, make sure you comment as well. I want to know, are you guys concerned about these bank issues continuing to be more systemic? Or do you think that the Federal Reserve has gotten under control in a matter of a few weeks or a few months that we want to be thinking about this? Let me know what you guys think below. Leave your comment. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.